Well, unless you've been living under a rock, you probably are seeing lots of commercials for investing your IRA in gold or silver. And I wanna talk a little bit about that and talk about a period in history that was very similar economically and politically to what we're seeing right now. And that was the late 1970s. I remember being a young guy and having to know somebody to get a job at a fast food restaurant. That's how bad it was. And I'm gonna look at this in terms of what if I had a million dollars and I put that million dollars in either gold, silver, or a portfolio of 60% stocks, 40% fixed income, really well diversified. And I'm using for the 60-40 portfolio something called GIPS Auditing, Global Investment Performance Standards. So it's actual client returns in the portfolios that we use to the early 90s till now, and before that, a simulated portfolio using a management fee as well, before that period in time of something that is very similar. So let's look at that, and let's look at the headlines back in the late 1970s, and I think it's gonna be, for you, deja vu all over again. If you look back, you'll see that some of the headlines could have been taken out of today's headlines. Number one, Plunge in the dollar unsettles the world monetary system. Uh, oil and uh, Iran, they were impairing the oil flow and they were imposing a price increase for 1979 and China was even in the news. And we saw that Europe was plagued by all kinds of problems as well. So very, very similar to what we see now. Also, another thing that was similar back then and what we're seeing now is people being interested in investing in gold. And now we're seeing headlines like this, that Americans think gold beats stocks as a long-term investment, or that it's an inflation hedge, or that it's a strategic inflation hedge is another headline right here. So let's take a look at inflation back then versus now and see if what we're seeing is very similar. And I like this chart because it's superimposing an old inflation chart on today's inflation chart. And you see, yeah, it was very, very similar. So we're gonna take a million dollars and we're gonna take $40,000 or 4% and increase it for inflation each year and see what would have happened. And what we see in gold, silver, or 60-40 portfolio is that gold was sorta kinda holding up. Uh, you had $1.2 million left by the end of 1993. Now silver ran down quite quickly. It was down to about $91,000. So it didn't take long for that to run down. Let's go to the next period of time, 1994 through 2003. And what you notice is that both of them ran out of money, both gold and silver, dry, gone, money gone. You can't take in income anymore. Can't get blood from a turnip, as they say. They're both in the negative. Now, how about what happened with our diversified portfolio between stocks and international and US and, and small companies and value companies and fixed income. Well, you did that, you took that same level of income. Not only would you still be able to be taking an income, but you still had one, about 16 million, 16, well, almost uh, a little bit over 16 and a half million dollars left still after taking all of that income. And why is that the case? Well, what we do when we invest, we want to diversify and own things that, you know, some things that go up when other things are going down, but we want things that move in dissimilar manner so that no matter what's happening, I've got something that is taking care of me in any given year that I can take income from. Now, what we saw with gold and silver, it was undiversified and it wasn't really an investment because it had no cost of capital. They weren't paying gold and silver, don't pay interest and they don't pay dividends and therefore it is a terrible investment historically with lots of volatility and you know, not really a great way to handle our investments. Even if I'm scared like I was back in the 1970s or I'm scared now, it wouldn't be something I would advise. But some people would say, look at this and go, but Paul, it's different this time. And my answer would be, it's always something different. All the way through history, there are always scary things happening. Number two, they might say, well, but Paul, gold has stood the test of time. And I would say, look at those numbers. It has been a low returning, high volatility investment. It has not stood the test of time. A hundred years ago, you could buy a good men's suit for an ounce of gold. Today, you could buy a good men's suit for an ounce of gold. 
Another thing is that, you know, say, well, Paul, the dollar is really going to crash. And my answer would be, well, if the dollar really crashes, I want to own companies because what they're going to do is they're going to switch to the new currency of choice. And that's going to protect me because I own those companies that are switching to the new currency that we're going to use. And the other thing to ask yourself is this, if the dollar is really going to crash, why are they willing to take your dollars for their gold? doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And finally, diversification is for people who can't predict the future. And that's really just a joke. <laughs> I was just checking to see if you're paying attention. Gold, silver, commodities, really not a good idea. And now you've seen the numbers.